very warm welcome everyone uh, since most of you are new just a quick introduction about myself i'm a chartered accountant certified interloiter and a crma professional uh, i have over a decade experience in the risk advisory domain i run a full-fledged risk consulting firm in the name of Pressman consulting um before venturing my own firm in the risk, uh, in the name of Pressman Consulting, I was with EY India, Genpact ERC, and I've done my articles from Sani Natarajan and Behel. Um, and, and I'll be sharing you, uh, I've been taking sessions on CIA since 2020. I've taught more than uh, 500 plus uh, professionals on this uh, subject. Uh, and uh, uh, I've been trying and supporting uh, to all the members on the CIA journey uh, through sharing whatever other industry experiences that uh, we carry. All right, so generally the session series is very, very participative. Today in with the first session that we're beginning today, folks, uh, we are going to uh, do a combination of context setting and starting of the unit one. So which means we'll do a quick in orientation sort of a thing um, to talk about what is CIE as a program. I would request to avoid multiple administrative queries if there is any regarding registration process, regarding fee and all, while I'll touch upon very briefly on it, but I don't want most of the time getting into that discussion. If there is any specific queries, I will give you the coordinates on the group directly to the administrative people who take those roles, be it in IIA or be it in BGRD. Still, you, if you have any queries, you, can, you all can reach me out, but since for the benefit of the larger group, I'll just touch upon. But uh, uh, and still, if you have some queries, we'll take it in separately. Uh, my request would be that, otherwise we will continue to discuss on those in, uh, during the entire program. And now we are 40 plus members. So it will it will waste a lot of this morning time, which people are, are, are I think some of the members are joining this from globally. So it will uh, spoil and, and um, uh, if impact a lot of others time as well. So I hope everyone is okay with that. Can I quickly hear the word? Yes. Are you all with me, folks? Once again, good yes. morning. Good morning, yes. 40 good people. Morning. Good morning, yes. yeah. Yeah. So I want every one of you to be attentive. Everyone is with me, right? Wonderful. All right. So, so let's start with understanding what is this program all about. Uh, folks, Certified Internal Auditor is one and the only globally recognized program in the uh, in for internal audit across the world. It's generally widely accepted, uh, highly recognized, uh, highly appreciated uh, by the stakeholders all across. Okay, so. People, um, people, uh, uh, people are highly acknowledging certified internal auditors for the role of certified internal audit uh, uh, for the for the internal audit domain. And today, when we will talk about this uh, uh, internal audit course, I will be also touching upon one of the slides, which is very very critical to give you a thought process, uh, especially to the younger folks uh, who are uh, uh, who are basically uh, looking for this course how this course can be beneficial to you all. It's not just being being internal audit, but what are the different solutions and service lines today we are talking about where we can contribute and we can place ourselves with various organizations, okay? So it's uh, while the course is called a certified internal auditor, there's a galaxy of services that gets open where we can play a different altogether role and contribute to the organizations, contribute to the uh, contributing to the business houses, okay? So let me first touch upon the course and then we will talk about the benefits and, and we'll talk about the different service lines as well in, in the session series. Um, so folks, this is first session. Um, uh, we are going to set the context very quickly. So we have total three parts for the certified employer program. Today, we also have CIA challenge exam for those who are qualified chartered accountants or CPAs or HCCAs. But since all you would have enrolled for the part wise, so I'll be ta talking a bit about only on the part one, uh, part wise examination. So we have three parts, part one, part two, part three. Part one is all about essentials of internal auditing, which is basics, very basics of internal auditing, where we generally understand um, around the uh, principles, the code of ethics, the standards, and the definition of internal auditing, which is the core IPPF framework, international professional practice framework. We understand post that, we understand what are the different nature of engagements uh, that we do from an internal audit charter standpoint of view. We understand around the quality assurance and improvement program. Now, this is very, very critical. Um, 
people who would have been working with the global organizations would have got experience on it. If not, we will surely cover in the class and we will understand the importance of it and what is the level of expectations from us uh, as internoiters. So we will be talking about the QAIP, Quality Assurance and Improvement Program. Then we will understand the basics of what is governance, what is risk management, what is control. And under the control also, we'll talk about what are the control types, what are the control frameworks, how do we apply control applications, we'll understand all of it. And then finally, we will understand fraud risk and controls. So that's all about the part one. We, it is, as it says, it's it's basics of internal auditing. So we are actually creating our base where we are understanding the standards, uh, attribute standard, uh, we, we are understanding the basic standards we are understanding the concepts like governance, risk management and control. We are understanding fraud, risk and controls, which is core to us. This is like, like creating a base for ourselves. As we move forward to part two, it is practice of internal auditing. Now, what is practice of internal auditing? As the word says, it says that how, first it starts with what are the different types of assignments that we do. Then after that, it, it tells that how do we do that assignment? And that's why it, it covers topics like how do we plan the engagement? How do we gather the information? How do we do the analysis? How the supervision should be done? How the documentation should be done? And how we should communicate the results? Okay. So that's why it's practice of internal auditing. It's actually exactly what we do on the ground when we do internal audit. So that's all about the part two. And then we have the part three where we have business acumen and the IT section mostly uh, test in the examination. So business acumen is all about the management theory side of it. And the IT is all about the information technology side of it. So that's the three combination of the part one, part two, part three. Are you all clear with what is all about the part one, part two, part three? Folks, can I quickly hear the word yes from everyone? Yes. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. So folks, I'm going to emphasize at this point of time in part one, because we're starting with the part one session series, we have eight units in total. Okay, people who are in case you have the old content, which is of the previous edition of the CLIM, perfectly fine, there's no harm. Uh, if you're referring to the old content, you're referring to the new content, it won't impact much uh, because most of it is same. Some of, uh, um, some of you would have been texting me uh, separately also asking me if there is a change in the syllabus while the Glim content, if you go log in and you will see that there are people, uh, there, there is a, there's, it says that uh, there's a change in the syllabus or there's a change in the content. So uh, I, I Institute of Interloiters have not published or have not notified for any change. It is just that the Glim has come up with a new edition, which they comes every year. So there's a change of presentation. Mostly it's the same topics rather sometimes I feel that the old topics, few of the old topics which are important uh, um, uh, and are, are not there in the new edition. Sometimes I feel like that and why, that's why we cover end to end in the class while we refer to the latest books. But if we feel that there's something which is important and was important in the previous content, we generally cover in the class. Okay, so saying that one thing which I would like to clearly call you out is that um, that uh, 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 the, there's no change in the syllabus. It's just about the presentation that the claim have changed. And uh, few things, uh, few things they would have added, very few things that they have added just for the better presentation. Otherwise, it's mostly the same thing. Okay. Um, so part one, we have eight units, folks, which means only eight chapters to cover, roughly about a 200 content, 200 pages content, uh, which is very easy and quick to be done. Uh, but but it is very, very critical. All the, all the eight units are very, very very important and I'll be sharing you on the percentage that uh, what is the percentage of each of these units and how this combined together but at the same time I would like to quick uh, tell you that all of this is uh, this is important without having a knowledge and command and understanding on all these topics it's very difficult to clear the exam okay eight units folks we have six sections in the part one section one is foundation of internal auditing which we will start today uh, section two is about independence and objectivity. Section three is about proficiency, due professional care. Section four is about QAIP, quality assurance and improvement program. Section five is about GRC, which is governance, risk management and control. And section six is fraud risk. Okay. So there are six sections. Just to give you a quick uh, thought on how the exam is structured, uh, folks, for the part one, we have 125 MCQs. Can you all say that with me? How many MCQs? For the part one, how many MCQs we have? 125. 25. 25. 25. Each question we get 1.2 minutes, which means we have two and a half hours to appear for this exam. Total, we have 150 minutes to answer. Okay, there's no break available in this exam. 
For the part one, we have 125 MCQs that are tested. For the part two and the part three, we have 100 MCQs. Those are tested. And again, we have those 1.2 minutes, which means that we have two hours exactly to appear for the part two and the part three exam. It's a very short, very fast uh, paper. And uh, you all can uh, like uh, appear it uh, on time and, and the results are immediately out. There is no break available in case you, you want to choose to take a break. It will be deducted from your examination time and you will have to follow the entire security protocol once again. OK, so let's say if you if you are if you have a two and a half hours period and if you want to go for a, a, a bio break or if you want to go for a, a, a water, water break or anything in that case, you you will have to. And by in time, your, your examination time will be up and running and you will have to step out. You will have to do the security again, security check again, and then enter to the center again. I've seen a lot of you asking, especially from an India standpoint of view, that whether we can give examination from home. So the answer is no. In India, we can give only examination from the Pearson View Center. So you will have, whenever you enroll for the examination, you will have to go to the nearest Pearson View Center, and then you will have to appear from the center. This exam, there's no option of proctor or fraud appearing for this exam from home. Clear? Everyone is clear so far? Yes or no? Are you clear yes. on the sections? Are you clear on yes. the broadly on the parts? Yes. Are you on clear yes. on the portion? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Moving on to very quickly on the on the uh, on the examination uh, on on the registration process, folks. So all those who have not registered yet, my rec rec recommendation is please register with IIA India. Any of the okay? Yeah, please go ahead. Akancha, you were all, you want to ask something? Please go ahead. Akancha Sharma. Yeah, you actually, yeah, yeah, actually yeah. it's my uncle. Uh, it's okay, man. My yeah, please. So, okay. yeah. Uh, so, uh, may I know if uh, we can uh, give the exam uh, if we are outside India, uh, exam from home? Uh, Mike, you will have to check on which country we are talking about and then accordingly we'll have to check from the local chapters there and I think that is, that could be doable. But in, in India, it is not, to my knowledge. And I think a lot okay. of people I know in the Middle East, they're all going to the center. Uh, okay. So if you have something specific on the country, you can text text, and we can check and get back to you. Yeah. Oh, okay. sure, sure. Yeah, thank you. All right, great. So moving on to on the registration piece, folks, uh, is uh, while um, uh, it's a very simple, uh, simple registration process, all those who have been new to IIA or to the Certified Influencer Program, uh, the first step that you should do is you should register yourself with IIA, uh, any nearest uh, nearest chapter to yourself. Uh, if Let's say most of you, if you are from India, uh, if you are from Delhi, you can enroll for Delhi chapter. If you're from Bangalore, you can refer for Bangalore chapter. If you're from Chennai, you can refer for Chennai chapter likewise. Okay, if you're in Bombay, you, have, you can refer to Bombay chapter. The local chapters, there are a lot of benefits of enrolling for IIA uh, with IIA. One is that it helps us to get a, discounted fee on our registration process, on our examination process, all of it gets discounted and there's a lot of saving to it. And I'll share that screenshot also with you. Uh, and apart from it, it helps you to network. They continue to share a lot of training sessions and all. So it's always beneficial to be part of the, uh, part of the, uh, part of IIA when you are uh, being part of the internal audit profession or you want to be part of the internal audit profession. Okay, so very simple. The first step is you should apply for the membership. Once you have the membership, you should apply for the course. Uh, basically, once you have applied for the, once you have the membership, uh, 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 sorry, I would say that once you apply for the membership, uh, you get at least, it takes about 15 odd days to get your global ID uh, on your email. Uh, the, it's an I global ID that's generated with access to your CCMS account. Uh, CCMS account is uh, basically your uh, sort of a self-management uh, portal where you kind of log in, create your profile, update all the details of your experience, uh, 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 past qualifications, uh, uh, creating all your profile, updating all your basic details. Once you have done that, um, your uh, details goes for verification, then you can apply for the CIA course. So once you have applied for the CIA course, you will have to pay for the CIA course registration fee. Once you have paid that CIA course registration fee, you will get uh, a three-year window to complete the CIA program and all. Okay, so you once you register, once you make the payment for the course registration, you will have three years to clear all the parts, part one, part two, part three, all together. Okay, if you are not able to clear it, 
uh, then also you will get a one year extension, but that's again a cost uh, paid extension, uh, given a case that you were not able to just uh, appear for all three parts in the three years time period. Okay. Um, now, once you have uh, registered for the course, now you can uh, uh, register for any of the part, part one, part two, part three, at any given point of time. It's not that you have to appear for part one first, then part two, then part three. You can appear for part three first, part two first, part one first, whatever you want to do it. And once you have paid for the examination fee of any of the part that you're planning to appear, then in that case, you will have to wait for uh, you you have the window to appear for the exam within six months. Okay, so uh, uh, you don't have to wait. Uh, you you can appear for exam within six months on any date, and generally you can appear the next day also. Uh, so if let's say if I'm ready today, I've just paid for my examination fee. I will have. Uh, six months window to surely appear. If I don't appear, then it will get expired. Uh, that fee would get expired and I would have to repay the entire fee. Otherwise, I can uh, appear for the exam at any given point of time. Clear? So far clear, folks? Yes. The steps, the first yes. thing is IA membership. Yes. Yes. Once we have got the IA membership, we get the account, uh, global ID created. We create account on CCMS. Once we create the CCMS accounts, account, we have to register for the course, CIA course. And then once we have registered for the course, we re register for the examination. Clear? And yes. we have the window of six months to uh, appear for the exam. We have the ex a window for three years to clear this program. Okay. Now, this is uh, each of the part uh, is... Um, uh, part one, part two, part three, as I said already, uh, about 125 and 100 questions. Now, the part, uh, each of these parts is a MCQ based question. Okay, multiple choice questions, folks. Uh, multiple choice questions, when I say that, now multiple choice questions is. Um, which means that there's nothing going to be subjective or uh, written exam. It's all optional based. There's no negative marking, but the uh, but the beauty of this course or or the difficulty of this course is that it needs 80 percent to pass. Okay, it needs 80 percent to pass, which is difficult sometimes to clear it because uh, one, it is very competitive. Second, it is uh, it needs a very good fundamental knowledge, and the third is that uh, uh, the pass percentage is 80 percent, which is uh, a bit high on a higher side. But that test uh, people uh, and accordingly, uh, that's the beauty of clear clearing the course with with the tough uh, with the tough criteria of clear uh, of of the passing score okay so 80 percent to score um now uh, there are total uh 70 750 points out of which you have to score above 600 but if you ask me that uh, uh Arbit, uh do you think that we have uh, uh, is there a structured marking criteria trust me there is no structure market the marketing uh, marking criteria uh, it's not that every question is of equal marks okay so it all depends it's a pointer based exam i have seen people who have scored 599 i've seen people who have scored 597 so it's not that any question could have been one marks two marks three marks so there is no clear definition of marking uh, but it's, a, it's just that we have to perform such way that we clear the exam and we pass the pass and uh, and we are accurate in what we are answering. OK, so we have to score the pass percentage is 80 percent. In case you are passing the exam, you will get the result as pass. In case you are not able to uh, pass the exam, then, then you will get a score with the areas of improvement. OK, clear. Are we all clear? Good question. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Great. Please. I, I have a I think question. There was, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, so is this um is this on a paper or is it a digital format the examination? It's, it's all in the digital format. So okay. uh okay, that's a very good question. So again, people have to go to the Pearson View Center. Um you don't have to generally carry anything with you, not even uh, your handkerchief, okay, not even your pen, nothing will be allowed inside. You have to just walk in. Um, the people, they will provide all of it. They will provide you the pen, uh, the calculator will be on the screen if it is required. Generally, we don't need uh, it for our CI exam, especially in the part one, generally not part Two, we still have some analytics there. Part three, we still have financial management as a topic. So sometimes can be uh, required, but uh, everything is provided by the Pearson View Center. Uh, it's all on the screen. There is a desktop that will be provided. On this desktop, you will have to appear. There will be the timer going right on the screen and you have to appear it. So it's all on the screen. There's nothing on the pen paper, okay? Okay, not even water bottles, is it? No, nothing, nothing is allowed. <laughs> okay. Not even water bottle. Okay. And I have so, another question on the registration part, sorry. Uh -huh. um, when I joined the course, I was given instructions as to how I create my global ID, which I've done. 
but you mentioned something about CCMA. So that's something I've never heard. So if you can throw some light on that, is it something that we do manually or is it part of the global ID creation part or is it something separately that we should do? No, so whenever you will receive your global ID, you will mm. also receive your um, uh, a link for your CCMS account. So it's basically okay. nothing. You will get uh, access to CCMS where you will have to mention your global ID and the password and you just log into a portal. Now, when you okay. log into the portal, you will see that, okay, you have your you're a member uh, and under that uh, all, all that you have to do, like you have to uh, register for the course, you have to monitor on uh, where you are on the part one, part two, part three. Uh, you have to register for uh, the, uh, you have to uh, navigate to the Pearson View Center for registration. All of it is in the CCMS account. Okay. Okay. okay so just one second. Let me, generally I prefer to show things very much practically. Okay. <laughs> so just a second. So simple, this is your CCMS link, folks. Okay. Yeah. Just a second. Yeah. So this is your CCMS, folks. Now, let's say here you have, this is my ID. So this is nothing. Like if you see ccms.ia.org, here it is, you will go. Now, this is like a dashboard that gets created. Uh, 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 now, under this, you have everything, right? So you have uh, your resources, you have your contact test, you, ha you have your help, you have your orders, you have your Pearson View Center tab. So generally what happens is, let's say if you're registering for the, uh, you, you have registered for the course, you can just go on my orders or uh, you can create your profile and then you will generally have a window here which says that, okay, this is my CIA program window which says, okay, part one, part two, part three, what is the duration you're expected? If you have cleared, it says that part one is cleared. Uh, if you have to uh, apply for anything, then you can just apply for the course. And then once you have to register, you have to go to access Pearson view and then you have to register. So you have to pay, make the, see, I've cleared it. Sorry, I can't show that screen, but if anyone has, I would have, uh, uh, shown it better, but uh, generally you will have a, a part one, part two, part three window here. And on the part one, once you click it, you can make the payment and then you can go to access Pearson View Center and register for the course. Generally, when you will go here, you'll make the order and then you will get which is the nearest center and what are the dates available in the Pearson View Center. Okay. So this is a CECMS account where you have to okay. update all the profile. You have to update your profile. You have to support, uh, submit the documents. You have to okay. raise any complaint. If any, everything is done through the Pearson View Center. Uh, every, everything is done through the CECMS account. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Abel. All right. Great. All right. So coming back on the, uh, any, anyone else? Are we all good so far? Yes. Uh, Mahapatra, are you yes. are you clear with yes. the CCMS? Right, great. Yeah, yeah. So there's okay. no negative marking. Yes. There's no negative marking, folks. Sorry, there's some disturbance that someone in. Could you please keep yourself on mute? I have one question. Yeah, please go ahead. Oh, uh, so I am from Hyderabad location. So where will be the uh, nearby location to give the examination? There are a lot of centers, uh, Praveena. So. Um, as you log into, you can just do a Google search and you can look at Pearson View Center, uh, nearest Pearis, Pearson View Center, and you will find it. In okay. Hyderabad? Yeah, yeah. There, I think, uh, surely, there will be something in Hyderabad for okay. sure. Thank yeah. you. Generally, it's mostly there. Okay. Good. All right. Wonderful. So, um, folks, as I said, 80% to clear this exam. There's no negative marking. Uh, okay. And exams has to be given from the center location until this other, uh, other than India, we have, will have to check it specific to the country. Okay. Uh, moving on now, when I was talking about a bit on the saving side of it, so my recommendation is all of you to become IA member only for the reason, uh, the, there are multiple benefits out of it, networking, connect, like regular trainings. Beyond that, only for the certification program, you almost save 700 plus dollars. Uh, generally speaking, uh, for uh, non-members who are non-members and want to go for the course, there's a significant fee of 14, 45 dollars. However, if you go for IA India membership, then uh, your total cost of the course fee is about $700. So you get to pay the registration fee of CIA course, which is $86. And then for each, each of the part, you will have to pay a respective examination fee, which is $221 for part one, $199 for the part two, another $199 for the part three. Okay, so that's uh, the pricing for India. For the global members, generally the fees is little high, but again, it depends on country to country if they have the, some other, uh, other special pricing with the global. Okay, 
but generally global members will pay this amount of fee so people who are appearing out of india may end up paying this much amount uh, however people who are appearing in india may, may be paying uh, will be paying this amount clear everyone clear yes all right yes Folks, I've already covered this. Uh, just to touch upon uh, quickly on the registration process also. So for I India membership, uh, now there are uh, there's something which is called as an individual membership. There is something which is called as a student membership also. You can choose to enroll people who are young, uh, people who are not working or people who are freshers can look at uh, looking for student membership also. Uh, I'll give you all a uh, connect of Chanchal Mishra on the WhatsApp group. If you have anything, you can speak to Chanchal Mishra. He's from IA. Uh, directly uh, so he he may he should support uh, uh, for any of the registration process if required uh, beside this uh, uh, it's a very simple process you have to go to the i india website and on the i india website you can just apply for new member uh, the fee that goes is the first one time fee which is 1500 uh, and the 4000 is a membership fee for renewal it is uh, again 4000 plus gst is the renewal fee so that's the fee that uh, um, i india charge for any of the chapters uh, as I said, once you have paid this membership fee, you will receive the global membership ID. Uh, generally, it takes two weeks time period. Then you have to create your profile in the Certified Candidate Management System, the CCMS, where you have to upload the required documents, the proof of identity, the proof of education, uh, and you have to complete the character reference form. Now, for this character reference form, uh, generally, I would speak that you can share the uh, share my details and you will sp you can speak to Bulbul or someone else from the VGLD team or can directly reach out to me. I'll share me you my details. Uh, 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 it's basically nothing. It's my mail ID, my uh, name and my designation where I'm working. So uh, you can take it from someone of your supervisor if you want in your company. That's completely up to you. Uh, so as soon as until unless you get the character reference pro uh, uh, checked and and uh, uh, approved, you will not be able to register for the exam. So all of this is required, folks, and which takes good time. Sometimes there are administrative issues. Sometimes there are technical glitches from IA. So my suggestion is, if you are planning to appear for the exam, don't keep it for the last moment. Start doing and regularizing it uh, uh, for now. Okay, you can always complete this activity now. Uh, and register for the exam one month down the line also that's not a problem but you should at least be able to clear all of it so that once you are ready for the examination you should not be getting into this administrative task okay so that's again one of the suggestions that i'm giving all of you apply for membership get the id create your profiles get the documents uploaded complete your character reference process once this is done now after that uh, your account is fully ready you have to just go make the payment for examination and the next day also generally in the two to three days time window also you can see that uh, there are options of for uh, uh, appearing for the examination generally the pearson view center generally have slots to uh, let people uh, so so people can appear the exam in a short time period also okay and then uh, uh, register for the exam and then access Pearson View to tab in your CCMS account and select the date for your nearest examination center. So that's all about how to go about it. Okay. Yeah, Girish, please go ahead. This uh, renewal uh, is uh, what is a one-time fees or every year it's a renewal? It's a every year. It includes a, so one time is of course about uh, getting as a member. Then it's a every year member uh, renewal fee because uh, see it's not just about the CIA program. It's all about being associated to the community and like like in uh, ICI also all the members have to pay annual renewal fee right to be, stay as members of Institute of Chartered Accountants of South India. I think that goes with every institution you that way so i also have the membership program now this is again uh, let's say for the first year you have done it and the next year you have not renewed it so in that case you will not be an active member and uh, all of that, uh, uh, the fee and all will go up high. Let's say in the first year you have got done it, you have cleared the part one. Okay, so and and the part one would have been two twenty one dollars. Now let's say if you are not the next year you have not renewed for the member fee, membership fee, and now you want to go for part two, then you will not get a discounted price of one ninety nine. Then you will have to appear for three ninety five dollars. So that's how it is. Okay, okay, understood. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Okay, and Sorry, generally... could you repeat that uh, structure thing once again? Um, I didn't quite get it completely. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that uh, generally uh, what happens is, let's say if you have uh, you have 
taken the membership in the first year and you have appeared for let's say part one and part two and cleared it and now the next year you've not renewed your membership fee and you want to appear for your part three so you will and since now you are not a non-member now you have become non-member right because uh, you you have not paid for your renewal so in that case you will and you want to appear for your party in that case you will have to make the fee of 395 dollars payment because you are not a you're now a non-member okay okay makes sense instead of 199 dollars okay great so everyone is clear so far are we all clear very basically are we all clear with what we are we are talking so far all about we have touched upon what is all about cia program we have touched about the different units different sections of the part one we have touched upon the examination piece we have touched upon the registration process we have touched upon the benefits of being with ia and the fee are we all clear so far yes or no quickly folks we have 40 plus members yes. here now I would like yes. to hear more. Yes. yes. Yeah. Bhaswati, are you with us? Dhruv, Anil, Anushka. Yes. Are you with us? Amitabh? Yes. 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 Yeah. yes I'm with. Jagannath, Kartik, Komal, Kripa, Lalit, Kuldeep. Yes. Yes, Everyone? Wonderful. So generally, I prefer a lot of participation, folks. Okay. So we'll go that way. Wonderful. So moving on now, what is what are we going to do? Uh, uh, everyone is uh, what is this? What is the content that we refer? What is the approach that we follow for our preparation? So we focus on the glim portion of it. Uh, we refer to the glim, which is the uh, most recognized and most accepted uh, content for the CIA program. Uh, sorry, there's some disturbance at someone. Else. Could you please keep yourself on mute? Yeah, so far, uh, so we refer the Glim uh, material and the Glim uh, content. Uh, all of you would be provided with the Glim content and the software access. Uh, so there will be printed books uh, the, or, the, or the soft copies, whatever you have enrolled for with the VGLD. Um, now those, that those are all administrative. So my request is you please take it up with the VGLD. My role is not uh, around the administrative task. It's more about coming and taking the session. It's limited to that. But again, the way I, I see it is that you all would get the uh, content from a book standpoint of view, be it soft, be it hard copy. Uh, you will get access to the Glim software. The Glim software is sufficient uh, to have a uh, practice lot of MCQs. There are 900 plus MCQs from the Glim uh, content uh, that gives you understanding of the concepts and give you more clarity. Uh, you can practice this question unit wise. You can do a random uh, consolidation of the questions. You can try in different fashion. Uh, and there are all these sessions, all that we are doing are going are re being recorded and these will be updated in the LMS system. You will get access to 88 Learn, which is a learning management system. Under that, you will get all the recordings in place and you can always refer them uh, uh, multiple times. In fact, my recommendation is all to all the people is at least to go two to three times recordings once you are before you go for the exam. OK, it's one time watching the coming and listening the sessions would not be sufficient. In my view, you should at least go with at least once or twice the re-listen the recordings. Uh, it may take some time. It may take some more effort, um, but but it will help you to get the more clarity and more hold on the subject. Clear? Clear what we are going to refer to. This is all sufficient, folks. Just to quickly give you a light and surprise you, and it could be icebreaker. Not even one single MCQ will get repeated in the examination. Okay. A lot of times we come with a perception that okay, Glim is giving hundred thousand plus questions, and these are one twenty five. It will repeat. Trust me. Unlike other papers that are there, and these are good global courses where the exam questions gets repeated. In CIA, not even one examination question gets repeated. And for that matter, it doesn't get repeated from the IA provided content. It doesn't get repeated from the Glim. It doesn't get repeated from Willy. It doesn't get repeated from any of the author's book. Okay, so it's all new questions that come. It will always come new. So if you have appeared this time, and if you're appearing for the next time, uh, then also it will be new. If four of you are appearing for the same day, for all of you, it will be different. Are you all getting it, what I'm trying to say? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, the, yes. so, so, so a lot of times we come with the thought process, okay, these are 1000 MCQs, we have to just go through it, we will have to memorize it, we will have to learn it, and we go and appear for the exam. Trust me, with that, we will not be able to pass the exam. All that can help us to pass the exam is some of the keywords, some of the key concepts, how we understand things, that is key to understand. The fundamental concepts are most important to clear this exam. Okay, clear? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Wonderful. Let's move yeah. forward, folks. Now, what is our approach generally? So what are we referring to? We have, we have covered that. What is our approach towards the CIA preparation is we uh, 
generally whenever we start a session we get a clear perspective of what we are going to learn so it's very important for that today when and today when we start studying the unit one also we'll talk about that what are we going to learn what is important uh, where we need to focus on what will be the key takeaways from this session okay so we set the tone we set the perspective right at before beginning of the session uh, then we understand and deliberate the concepts uh, uh, from a learning standpoint of view we cover 100 percent of the content of the glimpse study material right in the session which means that either me or a combination of you people will be reading all the content right here in the class so that nothing is left later on we'll discuss we'll deliberate with a lot of practical examples from industry standpoint of view and it could be any industry it could be fmcg it could be automobile it could be banking it could be quick commerce it could be uh, uh, a heavy manufacturing it could be any other industry consumer electronic pharmaceutical hospital so we generally cover different examples and understand different concepts wherever required okay so uh, we we cover the concept clarity with practical examples and i encourage people who are more experienced to participate uh, to share their learning with the audience also so that they can learn from each other it's not just me speaking all about it it i would request everyone to participate here and share some of the learnings that they have seen and the, and the hustles that they face in day to day so that people can understand and learn from each other. OK, so that's the way the sessions are conducted. Uh, we uh, for for we uh, we look at what are the practical learnings uh, to apply on the field. It's not just about learning theoretically for the paper. How do we apply this practically on the field is the perspective uh, and then uh, each of these sessions will have a things to remember section. So there will be a slide which will say that, okay, this is what we need to remember. Some of the keywords we'll have to remember and we'll have to look at if we can relate it when we are practicing the MCQs. Those things to remember is such critical that in the examination, you'll have to look for those keywords that will help you to score better. Okay, so each of the session, each of the unit is concluded with a things to remember section, which is very important. When we start the next session on the next day, we generally revise uh, what we have learned in the past, we discuss, we deliberate. Again, we don't re -look, redo the entire book, but we deliberate and we see how much do we retain. So it, there's a lot of revision uh, time that we spend. And then finally, after completing each of the each of the units, we practice MCQs. Okay, so we we come up with the MCQs. There's a Google form that is shared with you all on the group, and now you you will get a limited time of one minute. Uh, per, per question. So in the examination, you will still get 1.2 minutes. But in the session, we generally try that we give only one minute for each question. And let's say if you're practicing 30 MCQs for the unit one, in that case, you will have to appear 30 MCQs in 30 minutes. So we see how much we have learned, how much we have retained, where we have gone. We deliberate on each of these MCQs that, okay, you should have read this question this way. You should have interpreted this way and you should have choose this option. Yes. Why? And how you should have linked it with what we have learned from things to remember and the concept that we have build in the class so that level of um, handholding and support we try to give so that all of you can learn as much as possible right in the class clear everyone clear with what is the approach that we follow yep. yeah yes yes all right all right folks so then of course we have continuous q a sessions all throughout the session so anyone has any doubt you can see it if you still have doubt you can feel free to ask there's nothing generally unless it's too stretching i generally try to answer as much as possible right in the session itself okay so that's our approach folks moving on to the schedule now so we have 12 uh, we have total eight units so we will try to cover it in 12 sessions until the there's a requirement to extend it by one or two more sessions. Uh, it should take uh, the this time uh, to cover the session series. Uh, we are beginning today uh, with, with the first session where we are setting on the context and we will be starting on the unit one. Um, we will have the same time, 7 to 11 a.m. And I think we have one, two, two or th two sessions or maybe three sessions that we will extend, extend by 30 more minutes to complete the session series on time. OK, so this is the session uh, schedule that will be there. Again, you all don't have to take any screenshots for that matter of the slides. These all slides will be shared with you all, and this will all be uploaded on the LMS. You will all be, you should all look at getting the access to the LMS, 88 Learn, and where all these slides will be updated. Generally, it takes 24 to 48 hours to upload these slides, uh, and generally, it takes 24 to 48 hours to uh, update. Uh, these recordings also because it goes under some quality check and editing, and post that it gets updated. 
by the by the VGLD IT team. So it it gets it will all be there on the LMS. So you generally don't have to really take any screenshots, and you should rather more contribute towards learning, listening, understanding things rather than content because content will any which ways will be shared. Okay, clear? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So folks, moving on now. I have I've almost touched about the course, the schedule, the structure of the papers, the registration, the approach, the content that we're referring to. I hope everyone is clear with that. We 40 plus people, folks. Yes. Lanet, are you with yes. here? Neha, yes, yes. Neha, yes, you with us? Neetu, Praveena, Sanchet, everyone? Yes, Shraddha, Sarab, yes. everyone? Shubham, Suman Shekhar, Tejasvani? Yes. yes. Rabav, yes. are you with us? Vinayashri? Yes, okay. yes. Wonderful. All right, folks. So moving on now to the next part, which is something that I'll touch upon, which is very, very critical for all of you to understand. This is called, this is something that I call as Risk Advisory Services Galaxy, okay? Um, all those who are uh, prof, uh, who are uh, young professionals, all those who are uh, uh, CAEs or the or, or the risk heads of the companies, uh, you can stick on to this uh, uh, probably or share some of your thoughts. But for me, this course is not about just internal audit. Okay, a lot of times I try and focus and speak about it is that certified internal auditor while it's creating your base about the GRC as an overall overall topic, governance, risk management, and the control. But today we are talking about CIA not being just internal audit. It's much more than what we do. Internal audit is a internal audit is the bread and butter. Normally we call it that internal audit is the bread and butter is the base of everything. Okay, that's where the concept gets created. But today when we talk about uh, assurance and consulting services, we have various, various uh, solutions where we have various service lines that we're talking about. So let's say, let's say today when we talk about globally on the type of engagements that we do or the type of services with, that we do or the type of roles that we can play in various companies, I'll tell you people uh, 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 that uh, we have role to play as core internal audit team members. We have role to play as a core risk management professionals. We have we have role to play as SOX professionals uh, in the organization, especially from India standpoint of view. We have IFC uh, testing, which is internal financial controls, where we have a lot of a lot of things to contribute. There's so much of due diligence that is going on where we can play a role. There's so much that we can do in the forensics. There's so much that we can do in the concurrent audit. So that's all around the assurance piece. We can do so much on those uh, six profiles that is available. Beyond that, today we are talking about enterprise risk management. We are talking about TPRM, which is third, third party risk management. We're talking about IT risk management, which has itself a huge gambit of work. We are talking about CSA, which is control self-assessment. We are talking about overall GRC, which is governance risk and control. We're talking about ABAC, which is anti-bribery, anti-corruption. We're talking about AML, which is anti-money laundering. We're talking about credit risk. We're talking about ISO certifications. We're talking about cybersecurity. We're talking about digitization. All of it is where we can push ourselves and take different roles and responsibilities and contribute really well to the companies. Beyond this, from a compliance standpoint of view, we can take roles on GDPR, which is General Data Protection Regulation. We can talk about CCPA, which is California Consumer Privacy Act, and many more privacy laws are emerging. We can talk about the latest buzzword, which is happening all across the world, which is ESG, Environment Social Governance. We can talk about the traditional compliances, which includes tax, legal, labor laws, whatever it is. All of it is something where we can contribute folks. Beyond this, on consulting side of it, we can help organization develop their SOPs. We can try to uh, look at areas of intelligent automation from a functional expert standpoint of view. We can look for business excellence, business re-engineering projects. These are the various lines that we can work on. So when I say that, when we are talking about certified internal auditor program, folks, you all don't have to limitize yourself that, okay, this is something that I'm talking only about internal audit. While the focus is internal audit, I can understand that. But when I'm talking about doing this course, the options to get enter into the um, gambit of word where we have significant amount of opportunities. This is what I present you all folks is, this is the area of line that we can contribute. And my, my, my push to all the members here, today this morning would be 
that don't limitize yourself only thinking that i have to be internal auditor all of this all of this itself is the specific profile specific demand huge demand in the market there is a huge demand in the market for the erm professional there is a huge demand in the market for tprm professional there is a huge demand in the market for it risk management professional there is a huge demand in the market for internal audit professional there is a huge demand in the market for socs professional there is a huge demand for the uh, in the market for due diligence there is a huge demand for in the market for forensic there's a huge demand for them in the market for esd there's a huge demand in the market for privacy laws are you getting the the are you all folks i will repeat this are you all really excited to see the gambit of services that we can cater to comparing compared to what other professionals can do very limited to only focusing on tax or focusing on the statutory audit for part of it as internal audit professionals as this professionals what is the level of opportunities that gets open uh, can you all see and visualize and can uh, and some of you if you are senior can see onto it i will take a pause here and like to hear from more of you because this is very very important slide and i generally want to when you start your first day of the journey on the cia program i really want to focus on it and want to demonstrate that what you're getting into and what is the level of expectation because all of us here are here to not only talk about us as professionals it's all about a fraternity that we are talking about and we are expected to demonstrate the quality and the value that we are going to deliver to the organizations so it's not just about you and me it's about the profession and that's why i'm trying to put a hold here and want you all to emphasize on this slide and want to hear on and and feel free to ask me if any if you have any question on this slide So, are you all excited after seeing the slide? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. very much. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. So, okay, just to hear from people, just to make the session a little bit more participative. Um, uh, anyone? Uh, uh, just, just if you would like to call out that, what are the level of exposures that you have? Like, if anyone have, uh, let's say, for example, if I have been at your place, uh, uh, I want just session to a little bit become more participative and just try to understand each other's experience a bit. That okay, let's say, for example, Pratima, if you are there, if you are fresher, you can just call out that okay, I am a fresher. Okay, let's say Komal, if you are not a fresher, you have experience on internal audit socks. You can say that okay, I have experience among the among the service lines. I have experience only on internal audit and socks. And let's say Lalit, if you have experience on it risk management you can say okay i have experience on it risk management can i have 10 15 people just speaking coming out quickly calling out their name and just share some experience around it what are the areas of lines that you have touched upon so far and what more to go of course all left out is more to go right so can i hear from people yeah hi arpit this is girish lamba here so i just want to share my experience so like uh, currently i am in industry of retail like uh, retail industry and uh, i am in part of the finance team so i have generally look out the basic for finance and accounting work <clears throat> now as soon as industry is growing up and we are going for a listing also so there are a lot of the things which is related to the risk advisory due diligence compliances erm and rcm activity so i have uh, touch with a lot of the big four consultants to making up the things in a good manner so but uh, when i enroll this course because i want to also specialize in these areas so no i uh, really appreciate uh, your concern and uh, this course that it will really help in those areas in a specialized manner and if i have these ideas on these uh, my skill added then definitely i will more relate to my business and i will give value added to my company and in my skills also absolutely absolutely please thank you Hi, I'm Tejaswini. Uh, yeah, so I got introduced to uh, internal audit during my article ship actually. So when I went to my internal audit first, it was not just about finance, right? We were looking at productions, we were looking at inventory management for a uh, for a manufacturing company. We were looking at how the information was flowing from one department to another, and where there was a leakage in information. and uh, you know basically we were trying to fit in controls wherever they were not so that's what attracted me to uh, internal audit the most right yeah. now also we are i'm in a profile where we're trying to automate a lot of things uh, we're trying to help the company develop apps so as to there is no uh, leakage in information flowing from one team to another team so um I mean, I was just really very, very happy that it was not just finance that we were looking at. We were looking as a business unit as a whole. So right. 
that that's where it just um, uh, gives you an un in depth understanding of each kind of industry and each business in that industry is so different so um, i think that's the best part about being an internal audit very well said tejaswini so generally that was one of my area when i started my career in the risk advisory i was very excited to see how things work i remember i went for the first plant visit and i kind of uh, look at uh, let's say how this kurkurees are being manufactured or how this pepsi co uh, pepsi bottle is being packed so you know it gets so excited when you hold something you've been doing it for the last 15 20 years and then you see this getting manufactured or or a car being manufactured i think it gets really excited to see this and then look at areas of opportunities how to think make things better right so which is all about internal audit so just to make it more simple i think what you make uh, mention is absolutely important uh, most important of all of it to be a better professional is understanding business if we don't have the understanding of the business all of okay. that we are talking about on the slide cannot be achieved well uh, and cannot be delivered well so most important is understanding business and then of course these are the areas of service lines that we can deliver to to the organizations right great yeah great so they just when your experience is mostly on the internal audit side of it right I mean, I went to my article ship. Uh, I was in the first year. They let me experiment a few things, but I was just not drawn to anything. So I told my partner, I want to stick to internal audit. So the next two years, they just stuck me in internal audit. Then I worked in productivity for a while, um, in exclusively in internal audit. Um, and now I'm actually back in accounting. But uh, you know, I want this uh, <laughs> certification, so I just came back. My love for internal audit has just. taken over everything i try to experiment a lot of areas right. where i sort of you know uh, see where my interest is but it was just uh, this can uh, internal audit wonderful very good very good uh, sorab is saying that he's experience with tprm third party audit uh, erm sock sock very nice pci iso sop gdpr due diligence that's a good experience or a very good uh, priyadeep is saying i have work exposure on socks Uh, Aro Kumar Mohapatra is saying I'm working in a bank as head internal audit. I have experience of 30 years in banking, six years in compliance audit. Wonderful, um, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mohapatra. It will be pleasure to have you and share from you your experience around domains during the course of session series. Komal is saying I have experience as trust internal audit. Wonderful and handling all work related accounting, tax, and GST and in FCRA registration. Wonderful. So four five people participating. Others, anyone who would like to say. Otherwise, we can just take a quick break and then start at fresh um, uh, from the unit one. Um, so Sandeep is saying I have experience in I I F C I R M. Wonderful. Kripa is saying it's internal audit, I F C due diligence, S O P techno commercial audit. Wonderful. Great folks. I think that's sufficient. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll generally do a. Uh, open video kind of a session uh, towards the end of the session series we were, where we generally try to interact with each other to know whom who we are towards the end of the session series i believe we should do at the first but uh, generally that's the trend that we have been following uh, i want to focus on the session series uh, uh, and get started immediately on the unit 1 to start with from a learning today uh, um, uh, so Yeah. So okay, Anushka. There are so many people still replying. Okay. So uh, Vinita is saying I'm working with a telecom and internal audit. Past you worked with EY for six years in consulting. Jagannath saying I'm working with bank for thirty four years of which thirteen years in audit. Wonderful. Uh, Santosh is saying I have experience in rating agency. Good. Uh, Atharva is saying I have experience in IA, IFC, and some touch up to digitization. Anushka is saying I have. I've, Been working since last few years in the areas like Department of HR, Finance, Logistics. We have got chance to go in detail and set control through. I'm providing consulting service on GST income tax matter from last four year. Wonderful, great folks. Um, great. Um, so wonderful. Uh, good to have you all. And now, um, I hope everyone is clear on the different service lines. Yes or no? Quickly, can I quickly hear the word yes, everyone? Yes. Yep. Yes. 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 Okay. So moving on now to just give you a quick perspective on uh, because a lot of us uh, continue to ask uh, during the session series and there's a regular one question that comes in that is uh, I have the 2021 edition book and then I have the 2022 edition book of claim is there a difference kind of a thing um, 
sorry folks i'll take up this uh, introduction piece and the past experience piece now separately thank you so much while there's a last update which says anil i'm working on the psu bank and having 3.5 years experience wonderful anil so please now avoid writing this let's move forward um so just to give you a quick perspective on what has been changed from 22 to uh, the latest edition of the claim from the past edition so there's a text on the ia competency framework that have been added Okay, and now this is again important. We'll, we generally cover it already in the session series, but we'll emphasize a lot more on this part of it. And then under the unit six, uh, we uh, uh, again, there is a quick summary of the guides that have been uh, prepared. So while we all will be referring to the latest content and when we will touch upon this, uh, uh, this specific unit, we will cover that all together, but uh, only only very few additions in the in the in the latest content of uh, 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 Glim is there, which is they have added the competency framework, internal auditor competency framework that at a at a uh, starting level or at a at a junior staff auditor level, what should be the experience at a for a mid level manager, what should be the experience, and for what a senior level, what should be the experience. So that is the competency framework that is going to be there. It we all have have that as part of the content which we read from a competency standpoint of view when we'll cover it we, i'll show you more in detail um, and then unit six the, under the types and frameworks they have just added a summary slide so all of it, it will be there for you all to refer it in more detail uh, so and similarly for itgc and application controls there is a quick study guide and then there is a COVID 2019 framework that have been added so these are the three things that have been done and uh, uh, Beyond that, there is a lot of things. Uh, there, there are a few, few small, small things. I will say, I'll not say there's a lot of things. There are very few, few small, small things that have been removed. So as I said at the beginning, that if we feel that there is something which is more important, which is relevant, what we will try to do is uh, we will try to uh, cover that in the class if we feel that that may be tested in the examination. Okay? Uh, because as I said, there's no change in IS syllabus. Is that clear? But whatever we'll study in the class is more than sufficient. You don't have to think that okay, I have to go and study beyond this. Okay? So either it will be yes. also either it will be on the PPTs that we refer to, or it will be refer in the Glim content. So we are going to not touch upon multiple things. Yes, we may refer to we may refer to from a practical standpoint of view. We may refer to various documents. Let's say, for example, if you are studying a chapter internal audit charter, how internal audit charter looks like for various companies, we we'll look at that. But for your revision and learning perspective, you have to only focus on the presentation slides. You will have to only focus on the on on the uh, glim content okay the latest content or the previous content whatever it is it is okay because everything gets covered in the latest content plus the slides or the previous content with the slides clear nothing is going to be left out clear okay yes, yes. okay yes so wonderful folks now uh, so i know it's just it's only been one hour to do you want me uh do you want Quick 10 minutes break uh, we, because it's a four hour session and now we are going to start really going through the content. So do you want, do you all want a quick five to 10 minutes break? It's already eight, seven, let's connect it eight, 15, uh, eight minutes break. Uh, we'll take it in pieces because it's a four hour session. So we generally uh, take one break of 15, 20 minutes, but we may take two smaller breaks. I think that will be much more easier and uh, people can uh, concentrate more. So I think we have set the context of the orientation, which generally we spend about an hour. Now we are starting with the unit one content. So let's take a five to 10 minutes break and then start it. Will that be okay for everyone? Yeah. 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 So we yeah. resume at uh, 8.15. Okay. So let's take a quick seven yeah. minutes break and, and resume at 8.15. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. At the time, sorry. Sorry, sorry, I can't hear you properly. Can you please repeat that? Uh, I just wanted to say that, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Last time I was not able to do it when you are introducing that time. Okay. Uh, no you. worries, no worries. Thank you. Got it? Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Are we good? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Good day. Bye.